<laughs> That's the solution. <laughs> yo, 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 y'all caught us on the tail end of another funny conversation, man. What's going on to the con what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another week on the Conscious Approach channel. JV Wiz here, Dogon SS is here, bring you that soulful social commentary on a weekly basis, the way we always like to do. Appreciate everybody for tuning in, appreciate everybody for watching. Appreciate everybody for supporting our logical content as my boy Dogon is over there uh, chilling with his King Joffy Jofer um, right. uh, tunic. You know, he got, <laughs> he, got, he, got the guard, he got the guard working for him this week. So that's the mood that we on. Uh, before, we get, before we get into this week's video, as I always like to say, we are in a race to 1,000 subscribers. So we appreciate everybody who is joining the tribe. And as we continue to grow the community, please hit that subscribe button so that you can be a part of what we do here on this channel on YouTube and get that notification whenever new content is posted to the channel. Uh, also, go ahead and like this video. Uh, also, leave a comment. Let us know where we went wrong. Let us know where we went right. Uh, we do pay attention to comments as long as they are not of the troll variety. and We do respond. So, you know, join in. You know, let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about the subject matter because we appreciate the exchange and the dialogue. So uh, with those pleasantries out of the way, we'll go ahead and get right into it. Um, first up, we are going to talk about um, we're going to talk about what it means to hold down your street, man. Now, um, in the interest <laughs> in the interest of full disclosure, um, I know who this woman is, even though the video clip that we are going to play does not preface who she is. I know who she is. Um, we'll get into how it is that I know who she is once we start talking about what she said. Like but first, we'll go ahead and <laughs> right. But first, we'll go ahead and play what she had to say. And essentially, yeah. she was on a podcast talking about what it means to hold down a guy who is in the streets. So if you are a woman and you date a street dude and he happens to get locked up, you know, how do you maintain the right expectations? What does it mean to hold down a street guy? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, because she has the right mindset when it comes to this kind of stuff. So she wants to set all the ladies straight on the appropriate way to go about holding your street dude down when he gets bammed up. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, play this snippet, man. You know, see, the thing with this channel is we just report the news. We don't make any of this stuff up. Um, we just find it. So um, this is a reflection of where the world is. You know what I'm saying? So this is in line with the stuff that we'd like to talk about on this channel. And this is no different. So we'll go ahead and play this and then we will discuss what she had to say on the back end. What I learned over the years is that if I'm going to date someone that's in the streets, I have to be able to pick up a slack right. whenever he gets picked up, you know, and that, that comes with I have to take care of the bills. I have to make sure that he's good. I have to make sure if he has kids, I have to make sure that I can provide for his kids as if he's still outside. And most men, they date women and they damage them and do all this bullshit out, you know, while they're out. And when they go in, they don't have nobody. You don't have no one because while you was out here in the streets, you was doing her dirty. So why would she want to hold you down when you still you was doing her dirty? Like. Or what? Don't be dirty again. And on top of that, some of them, they go inside and they continue to do the same bullshit that they was doing while they were out. But the only person that's standing on your curtain is the girl that was laying next to you this whole time. What is she talking about? Like, all right, so <laughs> you got, you got to, first of all, you got to tell me how you know this uh, scantily clad woman. Yeah, so this 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 woman's name is Aisha Diaz. Um and uh the reason why I know who she is is because around 2014, 2015, I would say around this time, you know, mid to late 20s, uh before I became aware and unplugged from the matrix, I went through a little stint where I wasn't a utilitarian and I followed several Instagram models. Um, so I was a part of that ecosystem for a while. Um, our uh, other buddy in our group, he brought home a copy of King Magazine one day back then, back when King Magazine was a thing. Oh, yeah, and yeah. she was on the cover. She was on the cover of King Magazine. And you know me, I like I like Latino women. So she's Dominican. And I you know, saw her on the cover and I'm like, oh my God, who is this? 
this is like right up my alley. So, you know, I looked her up, followed her on Instagram. And so for about a year and some change, I followed her before I realized what I was doing was silly. And I unfollowed it because I told you I purged all of that out of my system. I went through a detox uh, once I realized that I was doing that goofy stuff. But that's how I know she, who she is, because when Instagram modeling was at its height, she, in my opinion, was by far the most beautiful woman on this earth, in my opinion. That was how highly I thought of her. Um, and she was also somebody who was like, for the most part, natural. Uh, no surgeries, no no lower body butt implants or none of that kind of stuff. I think since those days, she may have gotten some surgeries up top, some kind of breast implants. But back in the day when I first became aware of her, she was just bad, like actual bad, not weird old fake bad, not this weird old stuff that they got going on out here. She was just like fine all the way around for real. So she was like my biggest, you know, I had a thing for her big time um, back in that time before I unplugged and got out of that minefield of doing that Instagram model and all of that other crap. You, you were I never did a whole lot of liking and commenting, though. That's one thing that I can say is that I never did a whole lot of liking and commenting. But did I follow? I did. It was her and maybe a couple of others. Aaliyah Petty is another one I used to follow because they were just, you know, mesmerizing physically. Um, but, you know, once I realized that I, that it suits me better to live a principled existence, I stopped following them because it served me no purpose. There was no practical purpose to follow them, as we've talked about on various subjects on other videos on this channel. So that's my brief history of how I know who she is. Um, I'm pretty sure they introduced her by name if you watch the full version of that video. Uh, but in this particular clip, uh, they didn't. They just got right into the talking points, and the the title of the of the clip didn't mention her name. But Lord knows, I recognize her. That's for sure. So, that's my brief story on uh, how I know who she is. But uh, furthermore, what do you think about what she had to say about holding down her street man? You know, when he gets locked up, and what to do while he's locked up, and then holding it down when he gets out, and all of that, holding down his kids, taking care of the bills. She laid it out. She got a whole game plan. It barely made sense to me, to be honest. So I was like, what is she talking about? And so I, I don't get it. I mean, I really don't get it. I probably would need more context, but honestly, the word salads that she was going to deliver was just going to even you know, further confuse me. So I don't really think that this... Uh, this type of mindset speaks to the mindset of a certain kind of people. And it doesn't matter how good you look. And it's all about um, self-image, uh, self-worth. And even though she looks good, she has self-esteem issues. It's as crazy as it sounds. <laughs> Because if she didn't, she wouldn't seek so much attention. And so somebody who is thirsting after somebody who lives a life that would inevitably land somebody in prison. And then on top of that, if the person ends up going to prison for the lifestyle that, you know, they're obviously living. And then they're still, you know, doing this, I'm holding them down thing. And like, and that's what I'm saying. It's so vague. Like, what do you mean by hold down? Are you, you're going to always, you know, talk to them on the phone or visit if you could or write letters or however, you know, give them money and stuff like that. But, you know, when he's locked up for eight years, is that box going to be on lock? No. <laughs> so what are you talking about? So just because that you're you're being a companion to somebody that's locked up, I guess that's whole, that's a degree of holding somebody down. But that's what I'm saying. I don't know what she's talking about. And um, I, I get what she's getting at, like, you know, because you can completely abandon somebody once they get locked up. But again, like, why is this even a talking point? And for her to have this in her scope of thoughts of, you know, I'm that type of woman to hold a man down who lives this type of lifestyle. And again, that speaks to her self-esteem. So the guy that's selling that stuff 
he struggles with self-esteem issues, you know. So the woman that also struggled with self-esteem issues, she's going to be drawn towards this guy. So, yeah, it doesn't matter how they look or what kind of lifestyles they've been exposed to. I'm pretty sure she's been on private jets. But she'd still rather deal with uh, Mr. Ray Ray uh, over in the <laughs> cut uh, trapping uh, in his, um, what's, it, what's that, uh, his uh, white tee. So how about you, sir? Uh, how do you, how do you feel about this? Do you uh, agree with this lifestyle? You think that she uh, she's got something to this? I don't think she wants to get with Ray Ray in the white tee. I think she wants to get with the with Jeezy. I think that's what she has in mind when she's talking about my street dude is a hip hop type rapper type street type guy but he's rich and can afford the lifestyle and do all of that stuff but his image uh, is street uh, that's, um, that's 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 my speculation because that's my speculation but he might also still be in the street doing that stuff for real because she mentioned about him you know potentially getting locked up it's it's interesting too because you know she said when she used the word when which i found fascinating so you actually <laughs> anticipate Yes, him being incarcerated, like you anticipate the incarceration coming. Yeah, um, that to me is mind boggling. Um, this is hip hop stuff, you know. This to me is hip hop stuff. I try to be a reasonable, fair minded individual, but I have found that as I continue to get older, I'm starting to understand what people like my, my pops and like my older cousins and my older brother used to say about the music that we were listening to. You know, my brother's a Gen Xer and my dad obviously is a is the child of a baby boomer. So they come from previous, previous generations. My dad was born in the 50s. My brother was born in the 70s. And I can remember when we were coming up listening to our stuff, they'd be like, what is this? Like, what is this? What is this foolishness y'all are listening to? Like, are y'all actually like hearing these words and thinking that like <laughs> life is supposed to be like this and you know <laughs> back then i was like man whatever it's the music yeah. it is what it is man we just vibe into the music man stop yeah. taking it so seriously probably yeah. what a lot of these just say when we talk about the music they listen to. <laughs> of course that's you know, honestly <laughs> so <laughs> so like i used to be like man stop tripping off of that man we just listening to the music like chill but now that i'm you know in my mid thirties at this point, I see exactly what they were talking about. Uh, and I, I try to be a fair minded hip, uh, uh, reasonable individual who doesn't get on my, I, I try not to be get off my long guy who blames hip hop for everything because hip hop is, it, it's a, it's a byproduct, right? It's a symptom. It's not the root. It's not the cause, but damn it. If I can't help myself, sometimes I just got to kind of point it out for what I see. This is some this is hip hop stuff. Uh, this is it, it is interesting. Like from time to time, you know, last week we talked about Lala because Lala talked about how she feels as though marriage is a miserable prospect and how everyone she knows is miserable in marriage. And people who are in marriages aren't happy. Overall, she feels like marriage is a complete sham and that people are miserable. And my point to Lala was in a vacuum what you're saying might be true but you're not the right person to be saying that because your methodology for going about getting married is completely ass backwards you go about getting married for the wrong reasons uh and the pathology that you institute uh with respect to getting married leads me to say that you lack credibility when it comes to speaking on the subject of marriage in its entirety that's just how i see that um, and I feel like just like there is a horrible pathology when it comes to getting married, there's also a horrible pathology when it comes to mate selection. And that pathology comes from somewhere. Uh, so when it comes to people who are ingratiated in hip hop culture, they also adopt said pathologies for mate selection. This is just kind of how I see it. Uh, and the reason why I correlate this with hip hop stuff is because, like I said at the opening of this video, I know who she is. She was on King Magazine and Smooth Magazine and all of them different magazines. She was doing I she was doing IG modeling back when IG modeling was at its height, when you could get on and make 10 stacks a week 
off of doing IG modeling. This was back when influencing first started, when it was just a deregulated wild, wild west scenario. And if you look good and had a pretty face and a nice body and you had somebody who was willing to endorse you, you could you know, you had three, four or five million followers. It was you were you were set. This was when Britney Renner first became Britney Renner. Right. Yeah. And and she, her cohort is women like her, Petty the Model, Aaliyah Petty, all of those types of people. This is where they got their start. And IG modeling in that ecosystem was directly intertwined, was directly intertwined with hip hop culture. These were the same chicks that were showing up in music videos. Um, these were the same women who were dating the rappers and the athletes. And we all know that professional athletes and hip hop is also deeply intertwined. So a lot of these pathologies with respect to certain social interactions like marriage and mate selection are consistent across the board within these various contexts. And I look at a person like her and I say, because she was a part of that environment, a part of that ecosystem, a part of the hip hop scene, she's adopted this pathology for mate selection uh, and she's lived it ever since. And you can't break her out of it. It's her reality. It's her existence. And it will forever be her existence for life. And quite frankly, I feel sorry for her. And what I find most interesting about it is, you know, some, you know, from time to time when I'm kind of perusing the Internet and I just I'm curious, you know, I, I'm just curious. I'll I'll see certain commercials come on TV or I'll be on certain websites or I'll catch wind of certain streaming shows or certain movies and there will be certain actresses who i'm not very familiar with because i don't watch much tv or movies for that matter um but i know uh but part of the reason why i don't know who they are is because they're not a part of the hip-hop ecosystem and since i'm a hip-hop kid from that generation even if i don't know your work i might still know who you are if you're a part of that hip-hop ecosystem does that make sense yeah so if if i don't recognize you it means you're not a part of that world. And so I become curious and I might look up their relationship status or their marital status or something like this, just out of curiosity for shits and giggles. And I'll look up some of these women and, and a lot of them are married or in relationships to these nondescript guys who I've never heard of, guys who are in business or finance or in tech, or maybe it's a, a maybe it's a, you know, a surgeon or a doctor or somebody like this, a man who's successful in some industry and you'll never hear about him because he's not on the scene like that. Uh, and, you know, I, I look this stuff up because I find it fascinating. And it's like if marriages and relationships are so crazy, um, as a lot of women would like Lala would pray tell them to be then where is this whole other side where I can look up some of these other actresses who didn't come up in that kind of environment and I can see that they're not with street dudes, rappers, pro ballers. They're not doing any of that. And they're just you know, dating, you know, whatever, uh, lawyers or doctors or, 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 you know, surgeons, engineers, guys in the tech field, businessmen in certain other industries, take your pick. You know, it is what it is, whatever the case may be. And those women aren't talking about how they're going to be with their street dude, anticipate him being incarcerated. And while he's incarcerated, talk about how you holding down the fort and taking care of his kids and paying all the bills and dealing with all those other dysfunctional dynamics while he's serving his bid and doing his thing but those women also aren't ingratiated with the hip-hop ecosystem and so there's a whole nother world out there folks and you know for women like aisha unfortunately she is a part of that and so because she's been a part of that reality pretty much since she's since she's been an adult because she's been doing this since she was in her early 20s that's now a part of her and so she now has adopted the pathology associated with what it, what constitutes mate selection uh, in that in that particular lane or in that particular um, subculture of Americanized, Westernized society. Uh, so that's pretty much how I see it. I just kind of feel like this is hip hop stuff. I'm not necessarily trying to blame hip hop. I'm just trying to unravel the progenitating behavior, in my opinion, uh, and I kind of find that to be the progenitating behavior of this particular dynamic and why she speaks on it in this manner. Um, and I do think it's unfortunate. Um, and, you know, when you peel back the layers and you kind of 
pierce the veil and talk about some of the various dynamics inherent in hip hop, being from the streets and being somebody who might get locked up because of what you're doing um, tends to get associated with masculine qualities. And, you know, women by and large are most attracted to men who exhibit what they perceive to be masculine. And so I also think that that factors into it as well. Uh, but this is just more hip hop talk, street talk, BET talk, um, whatever you want to call it, BMF talk, power talk, all of that good stuff. This is just more of that. Um, can you be, you know, is it can you be surprised and disappointed at the same time? You know, I yeah, don't know. Right. That's, yeah. yeah, right. So that's how I feel. Like, I'm not surprised to hear her say that. And I'm also disappointed to hear her say that. I so I'm that. simultaneously not surprised and disappointed. Uh, but she was always one of my favorites. I've always been enamored with her. Uh, lately, not so much because I removed myself from that ridiculous, non-practical, non-utilitarian lifestyle of following women on the Internet let alone Instagram models. And so I purged myself of her and the rest of them and I'm all the better for it, but you know, it is what it is. And that's just kind of how I saw this one. Um, lucky for you street dudes out here in the streets, when you get locked up, you'll know that this chick is holding you down in whatever way that means. Cause I also don't know exactly what that means. Oh, uh, because I highly doubt that she'll be keeping her leg. I highly doubt she's keeping her legs closed the entire time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like the yeah, the, the other situation. yeah the satellite stuff because the guys do need that in there you know so the phone calls the visits whenever they could you know all of that stuff those guys need that so that is a degree of holding it down but what are you what are you talking about how far are you talking about holding it down <laughs> how deep we talking you know unless bro give you the green light because some dudes in there understandable from what I hear. And he'd be like, all right, man, but you know what I'm saying? Just keep doing this. But when I get back, when I get out, <laughs> right. <laughs> all that bullshit stop. <laughs> so there's those those contexts, but even then, man, it's just like, why choose that? But uh, I didn't think that angle until you mentioned the whole hip hop angle. See, I don't know this, I don't know this woman. Uh, I've seen her around, you know, uh a face here there. I didn't know her name. She but. even showed up. She even showed up real brief. She was even, I don't think she's ever been a main cast member, but she was on Loving Hip Hop New York. For how long? I don't know. I don't watch the show. But I mm. remember several years ago when that show was in season, uh, it would pop up on VH1 and I'd see her. So again, I don't know if she was a main cast member or whether she was like, popping up on random episodes here or there, but she was also a part of that show for however long she was a part of it. All right, man, she's gorgeous now. I, I give her that. You know, it's a lot of it's effortless, and as you say, you know, you can tell it's not any reconstructive crazy stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, be that as it may, I didn't think of the hip-hop angle of, you know, her dealing with a rapper guy or somebody in that that lane where she can have industry love possibly um you know you know power a couple new age you know so i didn't even think of that angle you know you know much like the whole britney renner you know campaign the lala campaign you know these talking points where they're just going on these podcasts just randomly getting interviewed and giving these hot takes about how they'll hold men down or how the market isn't really looking for quality women or whatever they're talking about. <laughs> and they're going on these, you know, these things and they're giving these points because, yeah, they're they're looking for suitors. Um, and, you know, somebody going to bite on that. I'll tell oh, you that yeah. much. Somebody's going to bite on that. But um, <laughs> but she's looking for a particular guy, some guy that will go to prison. So it's not a matter of if, it's when, right? So she's looking for a guy that's going to go to prison. So she even said that, when. She yeah. said she said when. So I don't know if she was just saying that flippantly, but you don't, you know, she said when, you know, he goes in or get well, however she phrased it, but it was like 
the anticipation of him getting locked up, it's, oh, which is wild. Yeah, to me. Hey, she she said it, so she knows yeah. she said. It. Yeah, she knows she said. It. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so if that's the lifestyle that uh, she's into. Uh, be that as it may, <clears throat> got a close friend, you know, and um, you know, I I know um, you know, a lifestyle he lives, um, you know, it's um, it's off the grid. And, you know, he just makes his money. And um, the guy was just getting, I mean, gorgeous young ladies, well-to-do. They'll do his homework. Uh, and meanwhile, they were just happy to be around a goon. And these girls were pretty and nice. And I said, wow, what are these girls di- dealing with? What, you know what? What is this? But they like that danger element. It's just something to it. So if there was a guy, I mean, I, I told you, man, that I gave an analogy, man. You know, a woman don't want a, a a Prius, man. She don't want that, and that's that's boring. It's safe. It's reliable. Low maintenance. Why would I want that? She wants a challenge. And so she wants sports car, luxury car, man. And, you know, that comes with a lot. It's a lot of scamming. A lot of weird stuff goes on at the top. So, um, and she's down for it. So, hey, man. Yeah, she been chose this life, man. If you're posing, if you're posing on King Magazine, I mean, so if she was doing that back then. I mean, that was, that's esc- she was escorting herself then. You don't get on those magazines covers if you didn't sit on somebody's couch. So, hey man, this girl know how this girl know how I go, man. She just she play her role. Uh, yeah. yeah, I didn't know she was out there, man. But uh, very interesting. I seen her in one um, interview randomly. I was like, you know, because of course I'm, you know, I'm scrolling it on YouTube. I'm like, damn, who that? And as soon as she started talking, I was like, ah. And then I just <laughs> I left the video because <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, when you're that pretty, you don't have to say things that sound smart. So, no, you don't. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I just, you know, I, the we, we talk about mind control on this channel all the time. You don't believe that there is a such thing as entertainment. You just yeah. call it mind control, social conditioning. Okay program yeah and 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 the various forms of social conditioning that we expose ourselves to as we develop and as we grow into adulthood really do have a profound effect on our decision making process and our perceptions on life in general and i am it is my opinion so this is my opinion you can disagree with me not you but anybody who's watching this video um You can disagree with me. It's okay. I don't mind if you disagree with me, but it is my opinion that people, women in particular, who grow up within the construct of hip hop culture, develop a pathology for mate selection in which they perceive street dudes as masculine. And I think, well, first of all, it's a fact that women are drawn to men who they perceive, whom they perceive to be masculine. So if a guy is street and women perceive streetness as a masculine quality, then they're going to be more drawn to those guys. And I think it stands to reason that you have a much higher likelihood to perceive streetness as masculine when you grew up listening to music that impresses upon you the idea that men from the streets are masculine. And I think that's where this comes from. And I think that she's just a part of that because she is undoubtedly a part of the hip hop ecosystem. Double XL, King, Smooth, all of these publications that I used to see her in, IG modeling, hip hop videos, love and hip hop TV shows. She's a part of that world, undoubtedly. Um, she used to post on she used to post on IG 
whenever she would make a club appearance. Same stuff Britney Renner used to do. Oh, I'm going to host this party at this club on this night. It's this rapper's birthday party, blah, blah, blah. So she's a hip hop chick. Dama doesn't just like the rest of them. Uh, you can pluck them all out from a lineup. They all do act, say, and think the same damn way. And she is no different, unfortunately, for me, because she's one of the ones that I really did like. But I just, that's kind of where I feel like this stuff is coming from. And so, again, not surprised to hear her talk on that, but I'm also disappointed at the same time. So it is what it is. It's just, uh, it gives us another lens through which to view some of these various pathologies and the origins of them and where they come from and how once they're firmly supplanted in your brain and in your psychosis, they really aren't going to go nowhere. They, they really aren't going to go nowhere. Well, Lala okay. can get married. To, Lala can get married to another NBA player after Carmelo and that dude will do the same thing to her and the marriage will dissolve and she'll get back on the market as a single woman and try and marry another NBA player. You people can't help themselves, and these women can't help themselves, and she's no different. I, I, I hear it, and this is, but this is all, and I'll say this: this is all stemming from primal areas of women, which is why you would say that modern feminism is an utter fallacy. Absolutely, <laughs> because <laughs> because everything they do is from primal stuff. There's, there's, women is as primal as it get. Boy, they, just, they just want what women want. And that's what <laughs> men is or should be. Should be. And so here, so here's the thing. Well, it's a challenge out there. I don't know the name of the song. But go watch uh, Chief Keef's first music video. Just type that in. And watch. And he, boy's probably like 13, 14 years old now. Look at the look in his face. Then look at the people around him's face who are all around his age. But look at Chief Keith's face because he's the main one. You can tell he's the one who has no face. <laughs> he was soulless. I was like, what is this? Uh, first time I saw, I was scared. I was like, this, this little dude younger than me. He's scaring me. <laughs> he looks like he would shoot me. And so I was like, what is this? And all those kids around him look like they'll shoot somebody. They, I'm sure they have. You know? And I, I'm looking at these kids, and I'm like, whoa, what's going on? The draw of Chief Keith from the masses was from that cold, emotionless, I'll do anything kind of thing. To tie it into primal energy, I'm gonna be 100 with you, bro. If we, if you weren't chilling, if you weren't in a in a village type of situation where y'all generation after generation just living in the bushes and chilling, and you know no no fighting and nothing like that, it's all good. But if you was living in an area where there was warfare, you had to be a warrior, mm -hmm. and you you know you had to do stuff and be a soldier. Ain't nothing but so many men in the village anyway. So every every man's a soldier. So. But now, you know, we got keep people clicking mouses and tapping keyboard. <laughs> then she looks. Then she looks at you, and her primal side is going. This is so lame. That's why women like outdoorsy, worky men. It mm -hmm. shows that they're doing something primal. That's him building that hut. That's him. That's him. You know what I'm saying? With the with the guys doing whatever, you know, hunting and, and gathering. And so when, but when you're just doing whatever things, women don't find that attractive because it's not primal enough. That's why they like football players and athletes because they're the warriors of men now. And so they gravitate towards that hardness. And so when it comes to street dudes, those street dudes, to tie this into Chief Keith, they have this coldness because of all the trauma they've been through. That coldness isn't, you know, it's not an act. That coldness is trauma. They've seen too much. They've been through too much. And it's a stale face. Whenever they encounter a woman, they treat them with a heavy hand. 
because they treat everybody in life with a heavy hand because they're so scarred. They like that weird stuff. So m- women being the opposite of, of men, men want soft, you know, from a woman. And women want hard from a man. And it's more than his exterior. It's the it's his makeup and what will make him go to war. Street dudes are more inclined to go to war, whether it's towards our own people or not. They're more inclined to go to war than the guy who clicks his keyboard. So that primal side of them is attracted to that kind of energy. Hip hop, you know, makes the it, yeah, situation right. worse and it yeah. glamorizes it. And right. so that's where that's where all of that stuff gravitates towards too. So yeah, man, this this is um, you know, it doesn't make it right, but it just speaks to just men in general that you don't have to be a goon or a street dude, but you got to be more active. You and do. If you do yeah. And if you do live a life of clicking a keyboard, you got to get some skills about your life uh, so you can be an asset to a woman and her family and your family, excuse me. So, uh, but yeah, um, teach this on with this one. Um, my DMs are open, ma'am. It's Joe All right. Instagram. All right. So uh, just go ahead and look me up. Yeah, she 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 is uh she is yeah, she's uh she's very high on my list. She really is. Um so you know oh my shout out you got her man. Let me get the other one. What was that what you said? Yeah, no, I was just, it, it just, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, it's just funny. It's interesting to talk about for sure, because a lot of this stuff does have an origin. So when she speaks on that, it's, you know, it's fascinating to peel the layers back. But if you know her history and kind of the type of industry she came up in and where she earned her bones, you can kind of, you know, connect the dots on that and understand why she would talk like that. But, you know. Nevertheless, it makes it for interesting content. That's what I say. Yeah, and one more thing. And get primal in y'all's thoughts, y'all. Relate current things to primal stuff. It answers a lot of questions. So that little mm-hmm. exercise that I did with the primal things, just relate things to primal things. And then it'll go, oh, you know what? Maybe that's what's going on there. So uh, just, just, just thought out. Just thought. Yeah, practical mm-hmm. advice. Practical advice, indeed. And, and yeah. Um, Aisha, if you happen to watch this video, JV wins at JV wins. Yeah, I'm not a street. I'm not a street dude, but I have far more useful skills. Uh, what Liam Neeson said in Taken, you know, I don't have money, but I have a a unique set of skills. I got a whole lot of unique sets of skills. So, you know, go ahead and holler at me. I'm open, but you're gonna have to reach out to me because I'm not following no more IG models or period any. Uh, so, but yeah, cool stuff. Good stuff, man. Good stuff.